So moving on then, let's have a look at what the practicalities are um, in community benefits. Um, in terms of being included, usually it should be stated in the contract notice that there's going to be um, some sort of social element or environmental element. Um, uh, certainly my mentioned there's going to be community benefits. But certainly in the specification, um, there will be mention there of community benefits. And it's something again that I'm sort of grappling with um, as to whether, if you put something in the specification that's there for something we're saying, you must do this. The downside to that is you don't get the innovative responses. So you might you might limit the extent at which you could have got better community benefits. If we put it in the PQQ or the ITT and say, tell us what you can deliver on community benefits, a lot of people will just be scratching their heads and go, well, what do you mean? What do you want? What's important to you? Um, on the other hand, we could get really innovative responses. So at the mo and some councils are definitely going down the prescriptive route. I think Falkirk have basically said, you know, if it's a construction contract and if it's of this value, then we will expect our work experience for six months and, you know, whatever. If it's of this value, then we expect you to take on one apprentice and so on. They're actually going down that very prescriptive route. Um, <coughs> and, and, and others, like us, we're just starting to dip our toe in the water now and I'm tempted to do the more innovative approach and just say, what can you do? But I do worry that basically companies don't know enough yet you know to be able to do that so sometimes it could be a bit of both it could be we want you to deliver community benefits and here are some ideas and then in the, in the ITT it could be tell us which of those ideas you think you would like to deliver um, and how you will deliver them okay so I've given away the next slide actually so if it is an innovative response we're looking for then where do you start um, I think there is definitely an element of having to do a bit of digging um, and find out what the council's priorities are because basically everything that we put in the tender must back up what the council's priorities and policies are. So I don't know if you've heard of these documents, the single outcome agreement and the corporate plan are two sort of major documents in each council um, and they'll have key priorities in there. So it's worth looking at them. I mean, certainly what we plan to do is we'll dig those out for you and actually take out key um, outcomes and put them in our document that we send out as a part of the tender. But some authorities might not do that. Um, and then the other question you should really be asking is, what support is there, and maybe, maybe money, uh, is available to help me deliver these? And I think there actually is quite a lot of support out there. Certainly when you're talking about apprenticeships and taking people on from long-term employment um, or um, other sort of key areas, there is, I think it was Archie said that 50%, Glasgow are putting up 50% of the cost if it's from one of their key priority areas that you take somebody on from. So we need to, you know, I'm realising the more I get into this, that we need to do more to help you with that. So again, actually in the briefing packet, it'd be good if we could say, and by the way, here's a list of support, here's a list of people that you could go to for support and funding in these areas. If, it, if you're still not clear, you've done, done a bit of digging, you still don't know, what on earth are they talking about, what do they mean by community benefits, what are they after here, what's going to score me points here? Um, ask a question, it can't do any harm, um, you know, the procurement officer's probably going, damn, you know, I really thought I was going to get off with that and uh, just leave it open and quite woolly, but it looks like somebody's needed more clarification, I better just think a bit more about what it is exactly I need. Um, and a little sort of word of caution here is that everything that's asked for has to be proportionate. So you can't say, you know, here's a hundred pounds worth of work, and by the way, could you take on an apprenticeship for five years, please? You know, that wouldn't be proportionate, and it's unreasonable. So look out for that, and if you do see something you think is <coughs> not proportionate and is basically a huge burden on you um, for the value or nature of the contract, then feel free to at least ask a question, if not, you know, think about challenging it. Respond convincingly. Um, I've just recently, I'm just about to award a contract and it's um, for trades temp agencies and it's a framework of three suppliers and two of them are, are suppliers with eight employees each and this is going to be supplying about seven um, local authorities and I must say I was extremely impressed with their both of their bids um, and the other one's actually a multinational 
organisation. So I think it just goes to show that you know you can you can respond just as well as any of the large businesses because what comes through to me is the passion. You know, if it's your business, it'll come through. You really, really believe in what you're doing, um, and that does usually speak volumes. So don't worry. Don't you know? Don't 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 feel that you're at a disadvantage because I don't think you are. Um, so be careful, be, be clear about what it is that you are offering to do. So even if it's very pres prescriptive in the ITT and it says, here's what we want you to do for this, repeat it in your response. You know, we will, we will take all, we will do work experience for six months or whatever it is. Say how you're going to do it. How are you going to approach it? You're going to approach this agency or that agency? Or, um, you know, are you going to, if it's about targeted recruitment, are you going to hire a hall for the day? Is it going to be Musselburgh, uh, you know, is it going to be Brunton Hall, theatre, you're going to hire? Be specific about it. It's much more convincing to say, well, actually, they've not just, you know, paid lip service to this. They're going to, yeah, they're, they say they're going to do that, but how do I know they're going to do that? You've actually thought about it and how you, you know, laid out how you're going to go about it. In the first month, you would do this. In the second month, you would do that. By the end of a year, you would expect to have completed X, Y, and Z. That's the sort of thing that I mean by um, convincingly. Um, and pictures speak a thousand words. So, um, you know, if you do have pictures that you can include, maybe of things you've done in the past where you've maybe got you know, a user theory or something like that in, or um, anything else that you think relevant to this, then, you know, do, do feel free to add them in. So, I think I have successfully um, stuck to the time there. These are just um, links that you can go to that to tell you the reg where the regulations are um, and point you in the direction of uh, a CBIP publication that came out in 2008. Um, construction skills, I don't think there are many here from construction today, but construction skills do offer help and support when it comes to apprentices. Um, and I didn't put it up here, but can I just do a wee bit of a plug for an event that we've got running any slow the end on the 19th of May. Um, we've just joined the Supplier Development Programme and we're hosting the first event on the 19th of May at Queen Margaret's University. So even if you just want to come along and have a nosy at this fantastic building, um, please register on the Supplier Development website. Okay, thank you very much.